So I recently passed my own CAPM exam in less than six weeks, and I achieved above target in all areas. So in today's video, I'm walking you through step by step the exact tips and strategies that I used so you can pass your CAPM exam on your first try. Hey everyone, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Alvin, and I'm here to give you the best tips and tricks in project management so you can pass your CAPM exam and PMP exam on your first try. So if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing so you don't miss out on any of my future upcoming videos. Also remember that at any point throughout this video, you can check out additional links and references down in the show notes and description down below. And by the way, be sure to stay until the end of the video to grab your hands on a copy of a free practice workbook containing more than 100 practice questions designed to help you pass and get ready for your CAPM and PMP exam. So the first question is, what is the CAPM exam and why should you take it? Now if you're not familiar with the CAPM exam, it's a great certification from the Project Management Institute that helps those looking to transition into project management, begin a career as a project manager, or for those who manage projects daily but don't yet qualify or meet the three-year experience to take the PMP certification. Now it's worth mentioning that the CAPM certification does not require any experience in project management. The CAPM certification only requires that you have a secondary degree, which can be a high school diploma, associate's degree, or equivalent, as well as 23 hours of project management education. And I'll talk about how I fulfill that later on in today's video. So a little bit about myself. I'm an engineer turned project manager and I recently passed the CAPM certification because I want to advance my career in project management and I hope to pass the PMP exam by the end of 2021. I recently just created my own six week study plan for my CAPM exam. I feel that should be way more than enough time to really study and dive deep into all the concepts that's covered on the exam. So uh, looking into my exam prep book, as well as the information on the PMBOK guide itself. And as you are already well aware, the PMBOK guide is a really thick book. And I've started you know, creating my own sticky notes and I'm looking forward to going through it within the next couple of days or so while I review my own exam prep book. But again, there's a lot of information. It feels like um, you know, water coming from a hose, but I'm really excited that in the next couple of days and weeks, I'm really gonna really have a solid foundation in project management. I just finished day five of my exam prep journey so far, and this week has been pretty much me just watching a lot of videos from a Udemy course called the CAPM Exam Prep Seminar by Joseph Phillips. And I really like this course because it condenses and packages all of the information really nicely. And at the same time, it qualifies you to um, meet the 23 hour education requirements. So if you haven't done so already, or if you're looking for a cheap and cost effective way to qualify for that requirement, make sure you check out the Udemy course um, by Joseph Phillips. Tip number one, create a realistic study schedule. Now, you are taking an exam in project management, so treat studying as if it was a project. Now for me, I was able to pass my exam in a little over a month's time, but the reason why is because I set aside key milestones every single week to make sure that I stayed on track. Whether it was studying a chapter every single day from Rita's CAPM exam prep book, watching videos on Udemy from Joseph Phillips, or taking daily practice questions to really test myself on the different ITTOs or knowledge areas. And that really set myself up for success. So I have finally finished reading about 75% of Rita's CAPM exam prep book. Um, in comparison to the PMBOK guide, this one is so much more easier to read and really understand. And so I highly recommend that you check this book out if you're trying to study for your exam. I did use the PMBOK guide as a reference aid anytime that I was reading through the book. If there was a specific ITTO, a process group, or a knowledge area that I had any trouble with. So make sure you check out Rita's CAPM exam prep book um, to help you with your exam prep journey. Tip number two. 
get an exam prep study book along with the PIMBOK guide. Now the CAPM exam tests your knowledge on 10 knowledge areas and 5 process groups covered in the PIMBOK guide. And it also tests your knowledge on the different processes and ITTOs or what's known as the inputs, the tools, the techniques, as well as the outputs for each process group. So when you're reviewing your exam prep book and trying to learn the ITTOs, I highly recommend that you spend the time to focus on understanding each process and making sure you understand at a high level what is its purpose and why is it important. And of course, what's the correct order and sequencing of each process that needs to happen when you're managing a project from initiation to planning, executing, monitoring, and controlling, and lastly, closing. So for example, in scope management, the WBS or work breakdown structure can only be created after your scope and project requirements have been determined. And you can only validate your project scope after you finish planning your work breakdown structure and defining what's inside and outside the scope of your project. So if you can answer these questions anytime you're reviewing each process group, then you'll have a solid mastery of the concepts being tested on your CAPM exam. I do want to mention that for my exam, I did not memorize the ITTOs. Let me repeat this because so many people spend countless hours memorizing the ITTOs when that isn't really needed. Remember, that is a complete waste of your time. Instead, as I mentioned earlier, focus at a high level and understand the importance behind each process and the key patterns and trends for the critical processes. And because the CAPM exam is based off the material in the PIMBOK guide, use the guide as a reference throughout your studying as well as to help fill in any gaps. Tip number three, create flashcards. For me, I really use flashcards because they are such a simple and yet effective strategy that works. They helped me out so much to master some of the key details between all of the different process groups, processes, and the ITTOs. Hey everyone, I finally finished week four and now I'm on to week five. I finally finished reviewing all of the different ITTOs, process groups, and knowledge areas. And not to mention, I finally finished understanding and going through all of the different earned value analysis formulas. And so I feel like I'm in a really great spot to start taking practice exams and different quizzes. So this week, I'm gonna be starting to take practice exams. So wish me luck. Tip number four. Create a formula cheat sheet. While you're studying for your exam, I highly encourage you to create your own formula cheat sheet or brain dump that you can study from on a daily basis and it's something that you can reference anytime that you're studying. Now the CAPM exam is a closed book exam, so you can't bring in anything with you whether you're taking it online or at a testing center. But if you do decide to take your exam in person at a testing facility, you'll be given a booklet or several sheets of scratch paper where you can write inside. Now I recommend that once your exam starts, use this scratch paper and write out the key mathematical formulas, equations, or the sequencing of the different process groups and knowledge areas. Now as I mentioned earlier, I memorized the 49 processes, what they were, and in what order they occurred. So I used this in addition to all of the formulas that I had trouble remembering as my own brain dump for the beginning of my CAPM exam. And let me tell you, this truly helped me out so much when I was answering questions on the day of my CAPM exam. Hey, guess what, you guys? I finally took my last practice exam, and guess what score I got? I got a 75%, which means that I've been scoring consistently roughly around 70% the past week, and I am really confident that I should be able to pass the exam uh, this coming Saturday. Tip number five, practice, practice, practice. Now, I highly recommend that you purchase Cornelius Fischner's CAPM exam prep simulator. You need to take a minimum of at least three mock exams. What worked for me was that I took three mock exams from the CAPM exam simulator offered by Cornelius Fischner's PrepCast and PM exam simulator. I also use an app called Pocket Prep to test myself on a daily basis with practice questions covering each knowledge area from the PIMBOK guide. Now, think of your mock exams as your rehearsal before your actual exam to give you an idea of the type of questions you'll actually encounter. Use these as a way to time yourself. How good are you at managing your time? 
Will you end up taking a minute on most questions or will you take two to three minutes per question? So for me, the CAPM exam is a challenging exam. So get comfortable sitting in front of a computer and answering 150 questions over the course of at least two to three hours. Now it's not enough just to take the exam. You also need to spend time analyzing your results for each of your practice exams. So for me, I scored 75% on my first mock exam, 71% on my second, and a 75% on my last. And I would spend at least a day reviewing all of my answer choices and understanding why I got those answers correctly and incorrectly. So use these as a way to identify areas you need to improve because you never know what the exam could test you on the actual day of your exam. So guess what you guys, I finally passed my CAPM exam today and I got above target. This feels so amazing. And I feel so relieved to finally have it done with. So again guys, if I can do it within six weeks, then I know that you guys can do it too. By using all of these tips, I was able to pass my own CAPM exam above target in all domains. So if you're just watching this, continue to stay positive, focused, and motivated. If I can do it, I know that you can do it too. And on top of that, once you pass your exam, you'll be officially certified in project management, and that is completely game changing because guess what now you can qualify for that next job opportunity that promotion and also it's a next step up that ladder so you can now achieve the dream career that you've always wanted on top of your dream salary so take that next step and set yourself up for success you can do it and by the way I created a free practice workbook containing more than 100 practice questions that will help you pass your CAPM exam. It walks you through step by step each of the different knowledge areas and helps demystify a lot of questions that I had trouble with when I was studying for my own exam. So make sure you download your free copy using the link down below and I'll send you an automatic email that contains this free workbook. If this is the first video of mine that you're seeing, Make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any of my future upcoming videos. And if you did find this video very helpful and valuable with your exam prep, be sure to smash that like button and consider sharing this with a friend who's also looking to become certified in project management. Help me reach other people so we can also help others achieve their own certification in project management and become certified. Again, this is Alvin and I'll see you in an upcoming video.